Denver Broncos interim head coach Jerry Rosberg met with the media on Wednesday at the UC Health Training Center. Got to know a little bit more about Rosberg, his message to the team with just two games remaining. A lot of changes in Dove Valley this week with the firing of Nathaniel Hackett. Plus, we get a little bit of a pulse on the locker room following the firing of Hackett. On top of that, we also have the Wednesday practice report. Who practiced? Who didn't? What are some of the storylines Broncos country needs to keep their eye on? You get that on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you're watching us on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that like or that subscribe or that follow button down below if you're not done so already so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content coverage and more from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. I'm at practice every single day. I'm at every home and away game covering the Broncos. You get all that coverage and recap, milehighsports.com. You also get that here, Locked on Broncos, alongside my co-host Sarah Bettinger, as always. We're going through a practice recap on Wednesday in Dove Valley. Obviously, the Broncos are preparing to take on the Kansas City Chiefs this Sunday at Arrowhead Stadium. I still call it that. I know it's G-E-H-A Stadium or something like that at Arrowhead. We're just going to go to Arrowhead Stadium here. 11 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. For those of you who live here locally in Denver, it will be on CBS. Obviously, a matchup between a Broncos football team that the season has not gone how anybody had hoped for. There's going to be a preview. Sarah Bettinger, my coach, is going to sit down with Chris Clark. That's on Thursday's episode, Lockdown Broncos Crossover Thursday Edition. But obviously, we were introduced to Jerry Rosberg, the interim head coach for these final two games of the season. We were introduced on Wednesday at the UCL Training Center. And I'll tell you this, the initial impressions, usually for those of you who don't understand, media people were granted at least like seven and a half minutes with head coaches, right, in, in any media scrums. Rosberg had an introductory statement kind of talking about the transition, how crazy this week has been for the Broncos. Obviously, as we all know, the news on Monday moving on from head coach Nathaniel Hackett after 15 games. Rosberg said for him, he's very fortunate to be in the position that he is. He's humbled for the opportunity. I know there's a lot we'll break down there. But for me, just sitting and kind of getting to hear from Rosberg for the first time, right? He was initially brought in after week one, after week two, essentially, after the Broncos beat the Houston Texans for game management, clock management decisions to help out Nathaniel Hackett, who had struggled in that department in the first two games of the season. As we came to find out, George Payton is the one who called Jerry Rosberg. They have a connection. They have a history dating back to when he was a scout in Chicago and when he was helping out with Notre Dame when obviously Rosberg was doing that. They had that connection there. So George Payton actually called Rosberg as he was sitting on his deck as we come to learn on that day and said, yes, I would be happy to do it and come in. And now he has taken over as the interim status. We all know Ejiro Evro declined the opportunity there. I think that's more so out of respect for Nathaniel Hackett. I'm sure we'll find out from Evro this week as to why he declined the opportunity to be the interim. Wanted to stay focused on the defensive side of the ball. It's been a tough week for players inside that locker room, for coaches as well. And we'll get into that a little bit later on the show. But for Rosberg, I felt like I was sitting in a coaches meeting once again. You know, there was a time where I was on a football staff. You know, our coach stepped away or stepped aside, and we had to bring in somebody. You know, a guy with a lot of experience, over forty years coaching experience. And ironically enough, Jerry Rosberg has over forty years coaching experience in general, eighteen plus in the National Football League. And I just felt like we got to know a little bit more about him. And there were a multitude of things that he addressed in terms of the message. He wants to see players excel and develop. He's a big part on player development. He inserted himself by saying that he was the one who made the decision for the team to part ways with Dwayne Stooks, a special teams coordinator, 
and Butch Berry on the offensive line. And Rosberg, with his special teams background, said that he needed to insert himself into that position room and into that situation there where obviously Mike Mallory will now take over responsibilities in these final two games. But the Broncos had no identity on special teams, and they were ranked 32nd in a lot of major metrics. So Rosberg made that decision ultimately to part with Dwayne Stukes. We learned that after meeting with Rosberg here today. But I think what's more important about what we learned from getting to know the newest Broncos interim head coach was when he was asked about the Kansas City Chiefs, right? The Broncos' next two opponents, the final two games of the season, Kansas City Chiefs on the road. you got to go against Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, the whole, whole shebang as to what Kansas City has. A perennial favorite this year, obviously in the postseason. And then the Los Angeles Chargers, who have clinched a playoff spot inside the AFC West. That's a tough challenge. That is a tough task. And Rosberg said, you know, you get a coach in the National Football League. He said, who wouldn't want to do something like that? And he said, choose me. So he's grabbing the bull by the horns, and we got to learn a lot. It was a long press conference, over about 22 minutes of him kind of talking about certain things, even addressing that, you know, some of the stuff that happened on the sideline with, you know, some player altercations. Obviously, we know Dalton Reisner shoved Brett Rippon. He said that he's spoken to both players. He's spoken to Randy Gregory as well, who will not be suspended for Sunday's game. And he said that this is something that they want to move past and, and they simply don't want this to happen. Once again, it has been addressed and everyone's been talked to. Talking to players in the locker room after practice on Wednesday had a chance to say, you know, various players, they, they loved Nathaniel Hackett as a human being. They loved him as a coach. And a lot of players even said that it's on us to go out there and perform. And when we're not performing, I mean, it affects everybody. It affects, you know, not only us, our teammates, but it also leads to certain situations like this and uh, you know, a lot of players, like I said, love Nathaniel Hackett. Contrary to Broncos country not liking Nathaniel Hackett, I, I think that you know, having the value of hearing it from players, how they felt about him as a coach and as a person, they all feel like, and they all have said to me, they wish they could have done more to protect him and obviously secure his job in the future. But obviously the Broncos are moving forward. There will be a brand new head coach for the 2023 NFL season. All these things considered, it was an interesting day, changing of the event there. And, and look, Rosberg wants the Broncos to play more disciplined football in these final two games, which I know for a lot of people hearing me say that, hearing what he said, a lot of people are going to say, that's cliche. That should be the standard every single week. Unfortunately, the Broncos haven't found continuity. And they said they're going to build a game plan around what can make Russell Wilson successful this week. Uh, some changes on the offensive line in terms of how they do things. Obviously, Ben Steele will man that up, was discussed there. And we'll figure out who's going to call plays. He said to ask him tomorrow. So we'll find out going into Sunday's game who will call plays for the Broncos offense. What will that structure look like? We'll get all into that. But Broncos country, one thing we are going to dive into on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, is the injury report. A lot of players did not participate in Wednesday's practice. We'll provide updates on that and much more on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But Broncos country, today's episode of the show is brought to you by Ultimate GM. And if you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. You get to manage every strategic aspect for your team that you are in charge of. You can play through the season and lead your team to glory. Here's what you're going to be responsible for as a general manager. You're supposed to hire the right coaches and the coordinators. You're going to trade players. You're going to make draft picks, and you're going to navigate your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of a season, all in the palm of your hand all in this realistic and challenging game world ultimate football gm is completely free and playable offline you can play on the go as you want and when you want to lockdown broncos listeners get a 100 free boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on in all caps in the game store that's locked on in all caps so make sure you check it out today to download the game just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app store that's ultimate-gm.com ultimate football gm GM, start your dynasty today. And our good friends over there at Audible, and Audible is releasing a slate of brand new football podcasts that we are sure you're absolutely going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode from The League available as a bonus episode right now on Locked On NFL. It's narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman, sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks. And The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport 
Pro Football. Our bonus episode is called The Way of the Cowboy and is the incredible story of how the 1977 Dallas Cowboys brought in Bruce Lee's protege to teach their defense martial arts, ushering in a new approach to the way that the league trained. Head over to Lockdown NFL for a bonus episode of the league or catch the full series wherever you get your podcasts. Available now, Audible. Get in the game. As we continue on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, a Wednesday practice report from the UC Health Training Center. I'm Cody Rourke of Lockdown Broncos. Just want to say thank you so much, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. The Broncos, they prepare for these final two games of the season. We're starting to see some teams around the league make some business decisions surrounding their core players. We'll see if that applies this week here for the Denver Broncos. But as it pertains, there were a lot of players who did not participate in Wednesday's practice in preparation for Sunday's showdown with the Patrick Mahomes-led Kansas City Chiefs inside the AFC West. First off, let's start off with Calvin Anderson, offensive tackle. He suffered an ankle injury last Friday or late last Thursday. He did not participate last week, and he was ruled out of Sunday's Christmas Day game against the Los Angeles Rams. I had a chance to speak with Calvin candidly, and he said that you know he's just trying to get the ankle right. It was an unfortunate timing as to how everything had happened, and we'll see if he makes it back to practice at some point this week. But for Wednesday, he did not participate. As you look at the Broncos, in totality, the offensive line, we know the changes to the coaching staff, but also we'll see, like, is there going to be any changes in the structural lineup of the offensive line? That is something to keep your eyes on here. But also in some other news, we all know Greg Dulcich, Broncos rookie tight end, who has been spectacular to watch early on in this season, has some flashes of being a very special player. He suffered a hamstring injury that ruled him out of action quickly in Sunday's loss to the Los Angeles Rams, and he did not participate as well. Keep in mind, he did suffer a hamstring injury in training camp OTAs that held him out of action for a good portion of the season until that week six Monday night football showdown with the Los Angeles Chargers. Another hamstring injury here. I think the expectation this week, considering he does have a history with hamstrings so far in his short career with the Denver Broncos in his rookie year, I do think that we probably will not see him on Sunday. So that means you're going to see a little more Andrew Beck. You're going to see a little more Eric Sauber, Eric Tomlinson. We will see at this point in time, will they activate Albert Okuwebunam for Sunday's game against the Kansas City Chiefs? That is something to keep an eye on. But also defensively, Baron Browning dealing with a back injury did not participate in today's practice as well. We'll see if he returns on Thursday on a limited basis overall. Two straight DMPs would be a concerning point at this you know juncture of the season for the Broncos, but they may be looking to protect some of their investments that they have, some core players they have in mind for the future. We know Baron Browning is one of them. Randy Gregory continuing to deal with a little bit of a knee issue. Keep in mind, he did not participate all of last week as he dealt with the same knee injury, but he was able to play in Sunday's game. As we know, he will not be suspended. He was fined $50,000 for the post-game altercation with the Rams offensive lineman. So keep an eye on that. We'll monitor all throughout the week. I'm sure we're going to hear from Randy Gregory this week as well with all the circumstances. Obviously him being fined, avoiding the suspension but more so returning to play. This also might be a decision where the Broncos step in here late in the season and say, hey, you know what, we are going to shut you down. We're going to protect you and and bring you back ready to go for next season. So keep an eye on that for Randy Gregory. Kareem Jackson always gets a Veterans Day off, usually on Wednesdays. No concern there. DJ Jones dealing with a knee injury, did not participate as well. Latavius Murray, obviously a veteran guy. They rested him because of the fact that, as Nathaniel Hackett used to say, he's getting old. Um, But for him, I think that's a good sign to rest him. He's de- he's taken some shots in between the tackles. You want to preserve him with these final two games. Quinn Miner has dealt with a rib injury and did not participate in Wednesday's practice. Mike Purcell, elbow injury, did not participate as well. Billy Turner and Deshaun Williams had personal matters that they were attending to and did not participate in practice on Wednesday. K1 Williams knee injury did not participate. As we know, he was coming off of arthroscopic a little bit just three and a half weeks ago, so for him, he's ahead of schedule. He's played in the last two games. Something to keep Keep in mind, though, for the Broncos, they may just take their time here. And as I said, it was just another investment in free agency for George Payton. They may be looking to protect K1 as well. Outside of that, Kendall Hinton made his return to practice this week, limited with the hamstring injury he suffered a few weeks ago, obviously, as the Broncos lost several other games. For him, I think it might be good to have him back 
And actually, we just got an update from Broncos PR as we're recording this podcast, an episode of the show. Quinn Miners was actually limited and was a limited participant with the rib injury and did participate contrary to the DNP designation we received earlier. So there's some insight there. Obviously, for a guy like Kendall Hinton, the wide receiver room, you see a multitude of guys coming in and out. We saw Freddie Swain active last week. No Brandon Johnson as he was listed as an inactive, healthy scratch with Swain and Cortland Sutton, obviously being wide receivers on the team there. Jerry Judy, you know, left practice a little bit, the media viewing portion with an ankle injury. I had a chance to speak with Jerry after practice, and he said, you know, he's good. They're just taking it easy on his ankle. He did get rolled up on in a freak manner in Sunday's game. For those of you that saw the replay, it was a pretty brutal injury. I asked him about it. He said, you know, I had to tough it out, and I went out there and, and, and played, and I think Jerry will be fine in this instance. Outside of that, Dalton Reisner are limited with a foot injury, and Cortland Sutton obviously limited with the hamstring. They're just continuing to take it easy. With Cortland, he was able to play on Sunday, and the expectation is he's probably going to play this Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. So that is your practice recap here from the UC Health Training Center covering Wednesday's practice for the Denver Broncos here in this bonus episode, Locked on Broncos. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making the show your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you so much. Make sure you check out tomorrow's episode of the show as Sarah sits down with Chris Clark, host of the Locked on Chiefs podcast, as they preview Sunday's matchup. You get that here on your favorite audio podcasting platform or on YouTube.